Chicago family preparing right now to bury their nine-year-old son. It is an unimaginable task for any parent. You see him right there, Tyshawn Lee, nine years old, killed earlier this week, an apparent victim of his father's gang ties. He is just one of the 391 people, 391 people in Chicago murdered this year alone. That is an 18% increase over last year, and it is just one week into November. Meantime, a priest on Chicago's south side laments the tragic turn his beloved city has taken, writing on Facebook, what have we become, Chicago, when a nine-year-old boy can be executed in an alley at 4 p.m. in the afternoon? We are joined by that priest, Father Michael Flager. Thank you for being with me. Thank you, Poppy. You know the pain of this all too well. Uh, a son that you fostered at 18 years old back in 1998, killed in gang crossfire. Why does this keep happening? You know, I think one of the reasons, Poppy, is that we have not had the courage to not just deal with the violence but to deal with the causes and the society and the realities that keep giving birth to this violence. We've got broken homes, broken neighborhoods, we've got high unemployment, we have no jobs, we have poverty, we have racism, we have poor education systems. We create the perfect storm and but but this is a new level where we've just gone to a new low. When you now, what kind of human being can execute a nine-year-old boy, what kind of creature is that? And what kind of society produces people like that? We know we're looking at pictures of beautiful little nine-year-old Tyshawn and his funeral yeah. will be held at your church on Tuesday. Have you spoken with his family? Yes, I've, I've talked to his, his mother and um, his father both over the last number of days and his aunties and the grandmother. Um, the mother we had to take to the hospital the other day because she was just laying on the on the ground in the place where he was killed for hours and we finally got her to the hospital to get some help and some sedatives. She hadn't slept since Monday. The father is angry and hurt simultaneously and no matter what the father has done in the past or what he's involved in or, or what connection this may be, you know, the reality is he was, he was not there when this happened, that if you execute, if you're mad at the father and you take it out now on, on children. There used to be a day when there was a cold. You didn't, you didn't kill children, you didn't kill mothers, you didn't kill grandmothers. That cold is removed. There's, mm -hmm. There is no boundaries, there's no moral center. Well, let's, let's listen to part of what you said about Tyshawn's death yesterday. There's an execution of a baby took place on our watch in the city of Chicago. We must now put the cold back. We've got to draw the line back. We've got to put the barriers back saying this here is not going to be tolerated. What did you mean by bring back the line? Where's the line? We've, we've got to bring the line back. First of all, I mean, I'd love to get the line back to saying we don't kill each other. You know, we can disagree, we can fight, we can argue, we have minds, we have mouths, we can speak to each other. But there was a quote, it was some years ago, Poppy, that if a person gang member or not killed a child on the street they had to be worried about themselves not being killed by the street and when they went to prison not being killed because that was just things you didn't do and and now we've said that this this is now becomes a new normal no we we have to somehow draw that line no this is not going to become a normal well, this is not going to be acceptable and you are uh, doing something extraordinary for a civilian. I mean, you're offering to relocate people that come forward with any information about who could have killed Tyshawn. Right, we have a reward fund that's now 35,000, but I said yesterday because the question keeps coming up of the fear. And I understand that. I think somehow, sometimes our, our the right, doing the right thing has to overcome our fear. But if somebody says, hey, I'll do it, I'll, I'll ID him, but I need to be able to move out of state, I will personally do that. I will help them relocate out of my own pocket some other city, some other place for their safety. If that's what it takes in order for them to come forward, we need to put this person in jail.